Hello, my name is Julie Dries. I'm the children's librarian at the Harrison Township Public Library. And today we are in my kitchen and we're going to be making up some little tasty little banana bites that we're calling banana sushi. We're calling it banana sushi because they kind of look like little chunks of sushi and we're going to actually try our chopstick skills today to see if we can pick them up with our chopsticks. So, if you would like to follow along with me, you can pause the video at any point to keep up and do the things that I'm doing. If you'd like to just watch the video through and then go back and do it yourself, feel free to do it that way as well. So let's get started. So the first ingredient that you will need for these, obviously you know this by the name of our recipe today, is you'll need some bananas. And you don't want to get them real green, but you also don't want them real brown and spotty because that way they'll be too soft. So try to get some that are just a regular nice yellow color and they should be ready for us to use in this recipe. The next thing we need is something that is kind of sticky. Okay, so I have four things that I'm gonna be using today. These are not the only things that you can use. You could use your imagination and anything else you have in your house that you think sounds like it might be good, give it a try. What I have today, the first thing that I have is some nut butter. You could use sunflower butter, peanut butter, almond butter, whatever you happen to like, cashew butter. So I'm using these little cups too. You don't have to have these little cups, but I thought they were kind of the perfect size. So I picked up a little batch of these at the grocery store for this project. The next thing I have is some jam. Um, you can use jam of any flavor, jam or jelly, um, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, whatever is your favorite. The next thing I have here is some hazelnut spread, chocolate spread like Nutella. And I thought that would be very delicious on bananas. So I put some of that in there too. And the last thing I'm going to use today is I have some whipped cream cheese. This is not the hard cream cheese that comes in the block or even the spreadable cream cheese. It's actually called whipped cream cheese and it has kind of a light fluffy texture and it's really easy to spread on your bananas. So these are my sticky ingredients I'm going to use. Feel free to use whatever sounds good to you. The next kind of ingredient that you will need are some things that are going to be the toppings for our banana sushi. These are kind of going to be powdery, crushed kind of things that are going to stick onto our sticky ingredients, if that makes sense. So again, I'll show you what I'm using here today. If you can think of other things that sound good to you, feel free to use anything that sounds delicious. So one of the things that I have here is I just took some of my favorite cereal and crushed it up. I have some crushed pretzels. I have some chocolate chips that were chopped and crushed up. I have shredded, this is um, unsweetened coconut. Um, sweetened coconut tends to be kind of sticky. This is real powdery and I thought this would work a little bit better. I have some chia seeds. Chia seeds are kind of a fun little topping that might be a new thing for you and you could try it out in this recipe if you want to see what they taste like. And you could do whatever you wanted then with some other things. Um, you could do crushed cookies. That would be delicious if you have some favorite cookies that you like. Graham crackers, I was thinking, or even like Teddy Grahams or things like that that you could crush up. Um, those would be fabulous on the, your banana bites. So how do I get everything crushed? You're gonna need to crush your things. So here's a quick little demonstration of how you can crush. Two good ways to do it. Number one, if you have a rolling pin at home, that's really fun to roll and crush. You just put them on a, uh, a board, like a cutting board, put some wax paper over the top and roll it with a rolling pin. Or if you don't have a rolling pin, you could take something like a coffee mug and you can do some crushing. Ready to crush? Here we go. So we have our little area all set up here and we're ready to make some banana sushi bites. So I've gotten myself a just a butter knife. You might want a couple of these for the different kinds of spreads that you have here. 
I'm also going to start using my chopsticks even while we're making these. So when you get chopsticks, they are usually, they usually come kind of together and you have to pull them apart. If there's any extra wood slivers, you kind of want to scrape them together and get the wood slivers off because you don't want that in your food. I'm going to leave these here because I have a feeling these will be helpful for us when we're making our banana sushi. I'm going to take a banana and we want to peel the banana and we don't need the peel so we can get rid of that. And then I think I'm going to start with cutting my banana in half. So right about on the halfway point I'm going to cut it. There we go. And if you want your banana bite pieces to be pretty and about the same size, uh, you can go and maybe cut one half and half again. Cut this half and half, this half and half, and just keep cutting in halves until you get, you don't want real tiny slices, maybe about a half inch thick or so will work. Uh, this one maybe I'll cut into three pieces because the ends are kind of big. There we go. This end is kind of big here too. All right. So you can see that we have all of our little slices now ready to go. And we are going to experiment here, guys. So here's what I thought would be easy. Instead of trying to hold on to the bananas while we're spreading them with our toppings, I thought that it might work to take one of our chopsticks and just kind of put it in the center like that, kind of spear it. See how that works? And then if we take our knife and let's say I want to do, let's start with some nut butter here. I'm going to take my nut butter. We'll get some of this on our knife. And maybe that's a little too much. <laughs> We're going to spread it on here. Get it all covered and nice and sticky. And then once we've got it covered, we are going to dip it in a topping. So what do you guys think would go well with bananas and nut butter? Which one should we try? I've got it covered here, see? Let's see, how about, ooh, let's try, I'm gonna try some of my cereal that I have here. This is this happens to be cinnamon checks, and I have a feeling that that sounds good. So let's take this and just dip it in, and kind of press it in there a little bit. Okay, and there we go. We have a little bite, and I'm just going to take this off and put it on my tray here. There we go. There's one. Now we can try different kinds here. And you guys, you know what? I forgot to show you one of the toppings I had. One of the toppings I have is some crushed nuts. Um, if you were if you were, are able to eat nuts, I thought nuts would be really good on these. If you're not able to eat nuts, that's no big deal. These happen to be cashews, so I'm using cashews. Okay, what kind do we want to do next? I've got another banana on a chopstick here. Let's grab a knife. I think I'm going to use a fresh knife here. How about some chocolate spread? Let's take some of our chocolate here, our Nutella. Get a nice good glop of it there. And... Let's coat our banana. Spread it on there. Alrighty. You can see that we've got that covered. And now, what do you guys think would be good with the chocolate? Hmm. Chocolate and how about crushed pretzels? Chocolate and pretzels. That sounds delicious, doesn't it? So we're going to take it, put it in there, we bring it out, look at that, we've got another little banana bite, and we're going to take that and put it on our tray. Let's try one with our cream cheese. I'll get myself a banana ready here, and here's our whipped cream cheese. Get ourselves a knife here, and we'll take some of that. There's a banana, and let's spread it. Oh, this one spreads real nicely. This one's pretty easy to work with. We don't want it to be too thick or it'll all glop right off. So kind of spread it around. Get some of the sides if you want. So 
some of the top. I think I have a little extra on here, so I'm going to do it on the sides. And on cream cheese, let's see what sounds good. How about some cream cheese with, how about some chocolate? Cream cheese and chocolate. Hmm, that sounds like a good combination. We'll just dip it in there. Get it all nice and stuck on. Ooh, I think I could even get more on there. Put it around on the edges. Ooh, look at that. That one's got all kinds of good stuff on it. All right, we'll add this one to our tray. There we go. Let's try one with our jelly or our jam. Get ourselves one of these guys ready here. Grab ourselves a knife and some jam here. And let's see how this one turns out. The jam is a little bit more runny than the other ones, so we'll see how this goes. Spread it around on here, maybe some on the sides. You don't have to get it all the way around, just enough that you'll get some of those toppings to stick. This is kind of like frosting a little mini cake. I feel like I'm putting frosting on little mini banana cakes. Oops, big glop just fell on my, my board. This one's a little, I think the jam is a little harder to work with. It depends on how thick your jam is. All right, so we've got this. Let's see, what if we put it in some coconut? We'll do kind of a little tutti fruity one here where we've got some fruit flavors and some coconut. Plus I think the coconut's gonna stick to this pretty well. So dip it in there. Oh, we've got that. Can you guys see that? That looks kind of pretty, doesn't it? All right, let's add that to our tray. Look at how nice they look here. So I am going to keep making some combinations that sound good to me, and we'll see what kind of combinations sound good to you. And when we get done, we will try to use our chopsticks to pick them up and eat them and see which ones turned out really good. And look at this. Look at how pretty they turned out. They're such cute little banana sushi bites. So now I think we have to try one out and see what it tastes like. So we are going to try using our chopsticks here. Now some of you might know how to do chopsticks already. For some of you it may be new. I am not a pro at chopsticks, but I'm going to show you the way I learned how to use them. And chopsticks take a bit of practice. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the small end of it, not the big, not the big wide end here. We're going to use the small end. And if you take it here, and I'm left-handed, so you'll see me doing this in my left hand. If you're right-handed, do it in your right hand. So you're going to take our middle finger, and we're going to lay our chopstick on our middle finger, and then just kind of put like that. See how I'm holding it with my thumb and my middle finger like that? Okay. Now I'm going to take the second one and I'm going to put it on my first finger right there and then hold it between my thumb and my first finger and kind of even these guys out. So now what I can do is when I move my fingers, I can move my chopsticks up and down and back and forth. Let's make this one a little longer. Okay, so we're going to see if we can pick up a sushi bite. Practice a little bit going back and forth and back and forth. See how my top finger is just going in and out like that? All right, well now the hard part is gonna to be to decide which one we're going to try. Let's see, which one should we choose? Make our finger go back and forth and practice opening and closing. Let's try this guy right here. Let's see if we can pick him up. Ooh, that's really good. That was a really good one. Should we try some more? Let's try a couple more. Now, if you're having trouble doing the chopstick thing, never fear, you don't have to eat these with a chopstick. That was just to try to 
get you to figure out how to use these and have fun with them. If it's too frustrating and you can't pick up the banana bites that way, the banana sushi, just take one of your chopsticks, just like we did in when we were making them, and just put it right in the middle of one, and it's more like a little banana kebab then. In fact, you could put a bunch of them on one of these chopsticks and eat them that way. So let's enjoy this one too. Here we go. So that last piece of banana sushi that I had, I had to take the camera off of me to finish chewing it because it was a really big chunk. It was maybe a little bit bigger than bite size. So when you guys cut your bananas, make sure you, you make them into bite sized pieces. Um, it was delicious though. So that's it. That is how you make banana sushi. So next time you have some bananas sitting around and you're feeling creative, see what you can find in your house that would be a good combination with bananas. Remember, you need something sticky and then you need the toppings. And when you put them together, there are all kinds of combinations that you can make and you can enjoy some banana sushi too.